in the tales of the search for the Holy Grail. They couldn't talk about the Ark directly because of Inquisition. So they called it the Holy Grail. And in the first edition of that story, they call it a crystal stone. Later on, describing it as a cup which had two vortices on each side. And so they went across all the countries they needed to go across to go to Jerusalem. They fought their way through all the way, generating huge amount of uh, difficulties, and eventually got to Jerusalem and took over the ancient city of Jerusalem. This is historic. They were there and they occupied Jerusalem for many years. For seven of those years, the Ninth Templar themselves settled right beside the Temple Mount in Jerusalem and dug and dug and dug tunnels that are still there today. But because this is Islamic ground today, the temple, it, the mount, the mount, it's the rock of foundation is right under the dome of the rock in Jerusalem, which is Islamic, is under Islamic control. The Islamic population goes there on pilgrimage, turn around the rock where the ark used to be placed inside the temple of Solomon. They're, they're venerating the exact same thing as the uh, Jewish tradition. And they're all fighting. Amazing. In any case, those tunnels are still there under the ark, under the temple mount. They're not accessible. You can't go there. They are blocked and they're heavily guarded. In any case, the Knights Templar dug for seven years and found zilch. Well, they found a lot of documents, and that's in history books, but they didn't find the Ark. It just happens that while they were there digging, a high pre, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the king of Ethiopia was um, in exile. There was a revolution in Ethiopia and was brought in exile to Jerusalem. And when he heard the Knights Templars were looking for the Ark, he went to them and said, I have the Ark. It's in Ethiopia. Now, how did that happen? There was a very well-known route along the Nile that went down the Nile through the Blue Nile into Lake Karnas in Ethiopia, Taos in Ethiopia. And sure enough, in Ethiopia, you find a high population of ancient Jewish tradition, which scholars never knew where the Jews came from, why they went to Ethiopia. Most likely what happened is that the Essene temple became unstable, became dangerous. It became dangerous to leave the ark there. So they decided to take it down the Nile. They did and they eventually settled at Elephantine Island on the Nile. Um, and they found a uh, an Hebraic temple there, which you know, in uh, Jewish tradition, you're not supposed to build a temple unless it's the temple to place the ark in. So wherever you find an, an ancient Hebraic temple, the ark had to be there. So you find that temple in the ac appropriate times being built on Elephantine Island. And then it stayed there for a long time, hundreds of years, until it became unstable there too. So they brought it down into the Blue Nile, into Ethiopia. And in Ethiopia, on that lake, you find a very ancient Hebraic temple having been built. 
And all the priests there say that they used to have the ark. And then eventually the ark was brought to St. Mary of Zion in uh, uh, Axiom, Ethiopia, where it's supposed to be to this day. It's a little chapel that's heavily guarded by the uh, Ethiopian army. And so, the Ninth Templar actually went down the Nile, and what they did is they made a deal with that king. That king actually is the father of the Rastafarian tradition. That's how deep this goes. The Rastafarian tradition is actually directly linked to the history of the Ark. And if you talk to Rastafarians that are really uh, scholarly involved, they will tell you that the Ark is the center of their uh, worship. So the Knights Templar, isn't this amazing? The Knights Templar went down the Nile with that king and because they had the control over the European armies said, we'll give you back your country. That's not a big problem for us. We've got guns. They have, you know, arrows and lances. And so they brought, they went down the Nile. Actually, they didn't have quite guns at the time, but they had more advanced technology than the Africans. And um, they give, they fought for that king's country, and in exchange, the king gave them access to the ark. And there, in Ethiopia, you find ancient traditions that talk about blonde high, blue, uh, blonde air, blue eyed people, Europeans coming in during those years, liberating the country, and building all sorts of things. Now, when, um, when you find these things they built, you know they didn't build this with conventional means. Because when you find the things they built in Ethiopia, you find that those are churches. One of them is a church that's a big Knight Templar cross type of structure that is not built, actually, it's cut into the stone, like laser cut into the stone, and then it's cut inside it and then emptied out this huge chapel, right? um, you know, basically cut, like sculpted right out of the stone. Only one person has been able to make, to interview um, the guardian of the ark, the guardian of the ark today. One priest in Ethiopia is chosen to guard the ark, and he has to be pure of heart. And when he's chosen to guard the ark, he never leaves the chapel where the ark is. From that moment on, he stays there for the rest of his life. That high priest gave one interview and he gave it to Graham Hancock and it's in the book The Sign and the Seal and in the interview Graham says what is the power of the ark and the high priest well first of all he says what was it the first how was it the first time you went in front of the ark and the high priest said it was terrifying. And Graham Hancock says, why? And he said, because the ark is an object of fire. That means it radiates. And then he said, what's the power of the ark? And the high priest pointed across from the chapel in Ethiopia. And across from that chapel in Ethiopia are huge pillars. Some of them 500 tons pillars of granite that were erected just like Egyptian obelisks and he said this was not done with the power of man this was brought here with the power of the ark 
So he actually says directly to Graham Hancock that the Ark has gravitational capabilities. Go ahead. Um, what do you think is Interestingly, when they arrived in Europe, the first thing they did is that they built... You see, all of a sudden, they became builders. You know, out of nowhere, out of nowhere, all of a sudden, they could build amazing structures. The first thing they built was the first Gothic cathedral, Chat, a huge cathedral in France. Now, that cathedral has been examined by many engineers. And all the engineers agree that thing is not reproducible with current technological advancements.